and gents, this is Mike Kelly. We are back with another great episode on the Heavy Group Real Estate Show. We got a gentleman today uh, who's an investor, teacher, enlightening people in the wonderful world of real estate that we all love. Uh, this brother, I seen this brother on the Instagram and I said, I'm going to reach out. I think he'll be great for the community. You know, we always get different perspectives and he might provide us a perspective today that somebody whether it's one or a thousand, can pick up from. Uh, the name of his brother's company is called Renaissance Capital Holdings and Media Group, and he's located in a beautiful, windy city of Chicago. Let's give, a warm, let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Andre Hayes. How you doing, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing great. Appreciate y'all for having me on. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, man, for taking time out, man, to really coming on the show and uh, and giving us some good juice. So, you know, I want to ask you, brother, because, you know, we have a lot of, our show is designed for real estate professionals, whether you're licensed or you're not licensed, uh, mm -hmm. particularly for people who want to kind of get in business in real estate or season. And uh, like I said, I saw you and I said, well, this brother got some, some good insight. Uh, sure. What year and what strikes you to say, I think I need to be going down this real estate, this, this real estate hole. Um, it was something that I always wanted to get into. I just never really knew how. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was something that I took serious probably in about 2010 mm -hmm. when I decided to step away from music. Uh, mm. But I, because I, I was rapping, and um, okay. I just still wanted to, you know, be wealthy though. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Exactly. So, um, I kind of got back in the rat race, went back and got a nine to five. After I realized the music wasn't working out for me. Mm -hmm. And um, in that time where I was sitting in that cubicle working at nine to five, um, I just made it my business to educate myself on how regular everyday people are out here getting wealthy. When mm -hmm. I was looking this stuff up on Google and just different ways to, to attain wealth, I kept on coming across real estate in the stock market. And, um, you know, once you go down that rabbit hole, man, it's just like, you know, endless information and just like just tons and tons of just value and gems. And I went ahead and... Um, kept going and, and after a while I started to take action on the information that, that I took which which is what I believe most people don't do mm -hmm. um, and that's what separates me from just the average person I decided to take action on the information mm -hmm. and everything that I read man it was the truth mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it ended up being true you know what I mean so mm -hmm. that was that was pretty much how I got started and everything but let me ask you up to here you said something about the things that you read after a while because we all know we know repetition is the mother of skill. Did you start seeing a pattern of, okay, wow, he said that, he did. It wasn't exactly the yeah, same thing. Everything, everything started, you know, to repeat itself, honestly. Mm. You know what I mean? Where there was in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Seven Habits, Highly Effective People, um, they, they were pretty much all trying to get across the same message. You know what I mean? They took, from my understanding, it was a mm. pretty simple message. You know what I mean? And um, it was, you know, work hard, but at the same time, work hard for yourself, um, create situations that are fair for everybody, where it's like pretty much create a win-win for everybody. Don't try to get over on nobody. Don't let nobody get over on you. Just mm. play the game, play the game fair, do things the right way. And um, <clears throat> and pay yourself first, man. Invest in, invest in things and put your money in things that are gonna generate you money as opposed to just like being expenses or you know what I mean, liabilities to you. Mm. You so I, I heard you mention which we'll touch on that. Uh, you said the stock market and real estate. You both yes, you both, both holes. What uh um, do you got a particular asset class you focusing on in real in real estate? Um, multi units. Multi units. Okay. Yes. So so now we in multi units. Let the audience know maybe why you didn't go down to single family and now you're in a multi family. And if you mind sharing, how many units do you have? Um, so I have currently two, four units and, um, it okay. was just, a, a preference and just like the education that I had received, like I say, mm. rich dad, poor dad, stuff mm. like that. And then also the, the mentorship that I had received and the opportunities that were available to me. So mm. I initially called my mentor after I worked that job that I just told you about mm. for about three years. And you know what I mean? Like I say, I had saved up some money, about ten, twelve thousand dollars and I had been educating myself, like I say, on just, you know, how people getting wealthy. So I called her one day, I'm like, hey, um, I want to 
I'm ready to buy a house because I had got my credit in order. I had saved up the money. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, that's cool, but you should consider um, going the multi-unit route. Mm-hmm. And um, it just struck it just struck a chord with me because I had kind of read the same thing in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where I was saying, like, you know, invest in uh, cash producing assets as opposed to you buying, you know what I mean, liabilities, which would have been a single family home in that mm-hmm. particular case. Mm-hmm. So that's what kind of led me down a multi-unit path because at the end of the day, a single family home, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but there's a a, a proper way to go about attaining a single family home without mm. you necessarily having to pay for it. You know mm. what I'm saying? And um and that's the multi and that's and that's the multi-unit route, which is what I did. So I went the multi-unit route, I got a four unit, and I ended up living in one of the units. So I house hacked. Mm, so house three hacked. of the units paid for yes, sir. So three of the units paid for the mortgage. And after the mortgage was paid, there were even four or five hundred dollars left over after the mortgage was paid, and I was able to live for free. So not only did I just eliminate my biggest bill, um, all of my other bills were essentially paid for by this property. On top of me making a couple extra hundred dollars a month, on top of me keeping all of the money that I was making from the job that I was working, which I didn't quit until a year and a half after I got my property. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, so you, so, so now you said you got two four units, correct? Yes, sir. Two four units. So, and and definitely you are on the path of accumulating as many, many as you can, or do you have a certain limit you want to stay at? No, 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 no. So, so I, what happened was I took advantage of a program which was called the NACA program, the Neighborhood NACA Assistance program. Corporations of America, which is what program my sister told me about. She's like, okay, I want you to get a four unit, and I want you to go through this program to get it because not only can you get a four unit, but you can get a four unit with no money down, mm. the lowest interest rate available that's in the country, no PMI, no closing mm. costs, no attorney fees, no agent fees, none of that. All you have to pay for essentially is your inspections on the properties that you want to get under contract. Mm. And inspections are typically at two, three hundred dollars, depending on how the size of the property. So even if I'm looking at a property for a half a million dollars, a million dollars, it don't matter. Like I'm still gonna get the lowest interest rate, no closing costs, all of these benefits. And um when she told me this, I thought it was too good to be true. I'm just like, got you, got you, got you, exactly. You know I mean? Excuse my language, but I'm no, like, it's fine. We keep it real on our show. It's all good. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you bullshit. And she like, yeah, nah, exactly. I'm serious. So mm-hmm. I signed up for the um, the meeting and everything, and I went to the first um, the seminar that they had. And man, everything that she said, they verified that it was true. Man, mm-hmm. no closing costs, no PMI, no just no money down, just all of that stuff. So. Man, I went through the program in my very first property. I got, like I told you, a four unit property. Um, I was able to keep the $12,000 that I had saved up in my account that I thought that I was gonna have to use for a down payment. Okay. In addition to that, I closed at the end of the month. So I received rent checks the very same day that I closed on top of eliminating my biggest bill at the time, which is my mortgage. Mm -hmm. On top of that, it was a Friday, so I was getting paid. So I got my paycheck from my job on top of that. In addition to that, I got a $5,000 check from a seller's concession um, that ended up working out for me. So mind you, at my job, I was making about, after taxes, about $26,000, $27,000 a year. After my first real estate deal, so I had the twelve grand. I got the extra five thousand dollars. Okay. I got like an extra fourteen hundred dollars from my check. So where is that? That's about, about eighteen thousand right now. Correct. Correct. About eighteen grand roughly. Uh-huh. In addition to that, I got rent checks that same day, which accumulated to about thirty five hundred dollars. And that all went in my pocket because you know that first month that you close on your property, you don't have a mortgage. Correct. So Correct. I was able to keep all of that. So I wow. walked into about twenty one thousand dollars mm-hmm. and again like i told you i had been studying on what people doing with their money how people getting wealthy Correct. i immediately took that big lump sum and rolled it into the stock market mm-hmm. because it's like now i'm sitting on all of this money and what i'm gonna do with twenty one thousand dollars that would first you know go start buying chains and taking Correct. trips etc cetera, etc cetera. Right. so i'm like no nah, i know what to do with this money now i got the opportunity i'm gonna take off so i put it in the stock market and my mortgage counselor me and him had formed a really really good relationship mm-hmm. and um and at the time that i was going through my process i was bringing uh my girl with me okay and he was like man are y'all planning on um 
y'all sticking this thing out, y'all serious or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. And I'm like, um, yeah, you know, she here with me, she in my all my business and shit. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. Exactly. She's and, here uh, now. So like, exactly. Yeah, she's right here, see what's going on. Correct. And, um, Correct. He like he like, listen, this is the play. He like, after you get your property, don't get married and none. Yeah, you bring her back and you get her a property as well. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that way y'all can go into whatever y'all gonna do, you know what I'm saying? Asset it up, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got trust put up, y'all got, you know what I'm saying, cash flowing, just every y'all just set up right. And um that's exactly what I did, except for with her property, we went way bigger. Um so my property was decent. We got about three hundred and sixty thousand dollar property in a really, really nice Chicago neighborhood. Okay. It's a suburb right outside of the city. And then her property, I kinda like knew the knew what was going on with the program. Mm-hmm. So it was a little bit easier for me to kind of like maneuver through the program when mm-hmm. it was her turn. Mm-hmm. So we went back through the program for her. And um, this time we just went big. Some rules had changed. Um, we found out we can get a more expensive property than what we initially had thought, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, I looked in like some of the most up and coming, gentrifying neighborhoods in Chicago, Logan Square, Wicker Park, Bucktown, these properties are a million dollars. We talking mm-hmm. upward towards a million or higher. And um, this particular time, we were able to get another four unit, but this particular property is extremely unique because there's a three unit building in the front of the lot, and there's a co- what's called a coach house in the back of the lot, and that's mm-hmm. considered the fourth unit. Typically a four unit is four apartments. No, okay. this is three apartments and a house. And that's oh, what wow. the fourth unit. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so with this yeah, so with this one, we essentially got a two for one. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. And um this property was eight hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars, but worth upward towards like nine fifty. So we're almost at a million dollars here. Mm. Um we were able to get this property with only seventy thousand dollars down, but it wasn't for a down payment to attain the property. It was for us to buy the interest rate down to 0.8%. Oh, brother, ho, ho. Let's, 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 yeah. we, 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 we got to say that to the people in the back, as I say on my show. Say that yeah. one more time. What's that interest rate? Yeah, it's 0.8%. Yeah, yeah. yeah mortgage? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah, I, yeah, think, and, I think that's the lowest I've ever heard, 0.8%. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's one of the cool parts about the NACA program is in addition to them already offering you the lowest interest rate possible, mm. you get the option to buy it down if you got the cash to it, or you put in the, the situation to buy it down. You have the option to buy it down lower than mm. what you already uh, have it. And mm. um, the cool thing about that is you don't have to have a certain credit score to do it either. As long as your debt to income is mm. in order, Mm-hmm. and you don't have any particular debt in your name, you're mm-hmm. fine. So you can have a 560 credit score and still get a 2.5% interest rate through the NACA program. Wow. And yeah. so, so 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 let's peel, some, peel that on your back a little bit. The unit that you all brought, and even the unit that you that she brought, then the unit that you brought, were tenants in place or you had to go out and get tenants? And how did that process work? No, I always, so I always try to encourage people when you're looking for a multi-unit property to try and find you something that's already cash for them, mm-hmm. it makes the deal go a whole lot easier. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. how they finance multi-unit deals is totally different than how they would finance a single family home. Mm-hmm. And especially if the property is already cash for them. So let's say, for example, you make $2,000 a month at your job. That's your monthly income, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say you're looking at this four unit property. The mortgage on this four unit property is three thousand dollars a month you can't Mm -hmm. afford this property it's a thousand dollars over what you make right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now let's say this property is generating a thousand dollars per unit so that's four thousand dollars a month right Mm -hmm. so what they'll do is they'll take 75 percent of the income that the property is generating and add it to your income Mm -hmm. so now you make five thousand dollars a month because 75 percent of that four thousand is three thousand so they add that three thousand to your two thousand the mortgage over here is thirty five hundred dollars a month. So okay. now you qualify because you mm-hmm. make five thousand dollars a month, which is mm-hmm. way more than what the actual mortgage is. If not even factoring in that fourth unit's rent, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So you're well overqualified at this point. Now wow. you can't do that with a single family home because the correct. single family home ain't producing no money. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. You so, know what I'm saying? Good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so all they're doing pretty much is using your personal income to qualify you for a single family home. Now, if you're going for a multi-unit that's already cash flowing, they're going to take 75% of that money on top of your money, and that's what's going to qualify you for that property. 
which allows you to go after those four or five or six hundred thousand dollar properties that you feel aren't as affordable as a single family home mm. or you feel is out of your price range but it's not anymore because you found the key to this shit you got the cheat code to it now that's right that's right quick commercial break if you're interested in a career in real estate or you're a seasoned vet you might want to change new environment you don't like the atmosphere you're in the Headley group realty could be there to assist you with your career what do we offer great culture Great environment, leads, and an awesome commission structure. Let us be there to support your business. One thing, you got to be in the state of North Carolina. Let's get back to the show. So what do you say a person says, one is it seemed like you and your girl, y'all brought strategically and you brought right in terms of the, the location. So yes, what sir. do you say for people who are in some of these larger cities? I mean, I mean like, for example, even though Chicago is a large one, but let's say a New York or LA, right? Or, or Miami where where the the, the, uh, uh, the property values are just too high. There's no meat on that bone, so to speak. Like, like, yeah. how do you, what do you say to them? And they said, I want a two unit, three unit or four unit, but the values are just too high. It's, and for me, that's the thing. Like, ain't no such thing as value too high. You gotta find those ones that's generating the income already. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what tell to tell for you. Now, if you wanna, if you still at that point feel like it's too high, you will have to look into something like a um a distressed off market property where you mm. have to like put some sweat equity into it and build it up how you want it to be, and then just kind of like get your equity on the after repair value and you know what I mean your rent and all of that stuff on the after, after repair value. But that's a whole nother process. And as a right. first time home buyer, um, I don't know if that's necessarily something you want to go through. You know what I mean? Mm. As a first time investor, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that's that's something that seasoned investors, you know what I mean? And and, and people who really like know the numbers game and all of that stuff really, really, really start off with. To make it the easiest possible, man, like I try to tell people, man, find you something that's already cash flowing. You can mm -hmm. just, you know what I mean, walk right into the money. You ain't got to worry about doing no full gut rehab and contractors and all that because that stuff can get stressful, especially your first go round, man. Very much so, very much so. And even if you find something that already is uh, uh, cash flowing, you have the objective to do small, some small updates and updates and possibly raise the rents. Yes, sir. Right? You know? or, yeah. if, or if they're not paying, you might say, I'm gonna kick you out, raise the rents anyway, you know, but at yeah. least you're working to something with some cash flow. And, and that's and that's, and that's that's kind of what my situation was. I've been able to like feel like some sweat equity in it. Like, of mm. course the building wasn't all the way, you know what I mean, up to my, my standards, but the apartment that I moved in was, fully renovated brand new so it was cool for me to move in and then it allowed me to add some, some touches to to the property that added major value but it didn't cost me a lot of money like windows and doors mm. some cosmetic stuff on the inside some roof work little stuff like that i've spent about twenty thousand dollars in my six years um just on improvements but i've accumulated over two hundred thousand dollars of equity in the six Ooh. years well wow. yeah so awesome do you utilize wholesales i mean wholesalers uh, currently, I haven't had to, um, okay. but with where I'm going now, um, I believe my partners probably will because I'm a, um, going into um, flipping and also I'm going to um, start buying single family homes as um, buying holds to rent out as well. Mm. So so what do you say to people who says, hey, I don't need no partner. I do this on my own. I make a dollar. I want to have, have all a dollar. I want versus having a partnership. What's, what's the best leverage having a partnership? man collaboration over competition all day long mm. like just if you think about just anything in the world like the biggest and the best always is collaboration what's well, like one of the biggest songs in the world like we are the world with that like 50 artists on there like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying from all different genres just like collaboration is always big like mm -hmm. when you hear a hear a a, a jay-z and kanye feature you're like oh man they back together it's like collaboration yeah. is just gonna always trump you by yourself like mm. you know what i mean especially if the people that you're collaborating with are on a different level than you are operating in different spaces than you you know what i mean mm. like that just makes the collaboration that much more better because now we get a little bit of this we get a little bit of this we get a little bit of that you know what i mean it's not just you and your flavor and everything that you bring to the table we get that on top of a bunch of other stuff mm. because you brought others along with you and um 
that just always makes for the, you know what I mean? For the, just like the, the better taste, bro. Like just even with food, like once you start, you know what I mean? Seasoning and you add your different seasonings and your salt, your peppers, your, you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. like, that's what brings the meal together. That's what completes everything, man. You got to collaborate, you know, chicken mm-hmm. by itself. And it's like, ah, you know? Correct, correct. <laughs> like, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, mentors. What do you say to people who says, I don't need no training, I don't need no mentors. No, I can do mm. this on my own. I got I go to YouTube University. I don't need nobody. What do you say? Man, to that? You make it that even still that's mentorship because you're following mm. somebody. You know what I'm mm. saying? You're looking up mm. to somebody, you get your information from somebody. Like mm. you can't say that you're doing it on your own because you're not. Like, you know what mm. I mean? It's no it's no such thing as doing it on your own. Like mm. I don't give a fuck what you say. Like ain't nobody mm. out here self-made. Like you had to go do something. You had to have customers. Like people had to support you. Like you ain't exactly. just go out here and make pull money out the sky and put yourself on. Like no, there is no such thing as a self-made individual. You know what I mean? Like I just mm-hmm. I just don't agree with those statements because at the right. end of the day, somewhere along the path you were helped. You had to get customers. You had to get support. You had to get funding. Like all of these Correct. different things have to come from somewhere, and it didn't mm-hmm. all come from you. Mm, I like that. Let, 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 let's have a, we have a little, uh, uh, let's transition real quick. Cause you said you would like to highlight what people, uh, uh, what they was doing prior. And you mentioned music. You, you, you was rapping, you, you was singing, what, what, what was it? No, I was rapping, bro. Um, you was rapping. And I was, and I was, um, I was having label meetings and, mm. you know, doing shows with like big artists, Fat Joes and okay. T.I.s and like in the room with Jay-Z and Beyonce, like a lot of people, um, because a lot of my friends, well, I ain't gonna say a lot of them, a couple of my friends ended up going to the NBA, playing NBA ball, and just like, okay. I just always had a really big network. Okay. And um, it just wasn't working out for me, bro. Mm. Like, and I was going hard. Like I said, I was in the right room, having the meetings and doing everything. But just, you know, sometimes even when you do everything right, it just ain't gonna work out for you. But mm. you gotta understand that what's for you is gonna always be for you and that wasn't for me and exactly. this is the space that i'm supposed to be operating in now because at this point i'm flourishing in it and doing everything correct that i was gonna do as like that i was trying to do like i was trying to use rap to leverage all of this shit that i was trying to do correct like, exactly. Like, exactly i felt like i felt like music or entertainment which is what most black young black men for like sports or entertainment is correct. their only way out you know what correct. i mean and that was kind of the path that i was on but once I realized, like, you don't need that shit to be successful, it was right. just like a whole lot easier for me to just like, oh, okay, well, I, I can step away from that because mm-hmm. that really ain't what I want to do anyway. I was really just doing that just because I thought that was the lick I was gonna hit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the whole time, God had a whole nother lick over here for me to hit that was gonna That's have it. me on the right path. That was gonna have me serving my people. That was gonna have me putting mm-hmm. my people in a position to win. That's gonna have me in a position to win. That was gonna change my life and put me in a position of ownership. And being a rapper, I would have been a slave. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So God pulled me out of slavery and put mm-hmm. me into like a ownership CEO situation. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, I'm ultimately blessed and thankful for that because ain't no telling who I would have owed or how much debt I'd be in right now had I been signing deals or doing any of the other mess I was trying to do. You know? Mm-hmm. And and I commend you on that. You know, you would think. Somebody says, "Hey, this is my this is my passion. This is what I want. I'm gonna stick with it and probably get myself caught up in something where I'm continue own own. I'm continue owing somebody and they own all my publishing, my masters. Yeah, yeah. The fact that you realize, uh, uh-uh, let me give that up. Let me focus on this, and it has flourished for you. I commend you on that. Um, I'm gonna focus on the. I see you with your post that you do some training, some educating." Some um so, so so walk us down the lane. Talk to us about that a little bit. Um, so what I so typically most of my content, um, I give it away for free. Mm. Um, but what I did was um because I, I get a ton of real estate questions, man, and um to save my time, to save my energy, um, to save me constantly repeating the same thing over, I created um an introduction to real estate course where I um pretty much teach and go over like just a lot of different things and a lot of different subjects. Um, and it was things that I wanted to know as a first time investor, as a first time mm-hmm. home buyer, um, that I had to like dig deep for and research and you know what I mean? Like kind of like spread myself kind of thin to, when it comes to certain information to find. And I just kind of wanted to pack everything into this one course. And uh, I did it in this course called Introduction to Real Estate where I have um, over 30 video modules, man, about three, four hours of content, um, 
where I'm just teaching just hardcore real estate, man, different ways to invest, um, real estate type, like types and classes, how to understand market, what makes a good investment, um, how to use leverage in real estate, um, just like so many different things that I teach in this course, man. And um, it's under a hundred dollars, you know what mm. I mean? And typically like the information that I have in this course, you got guys like Brent Cardone, Ty Lopez, is guys who are like heavy, heavy in the real estate right. industry. They sell this type of stuff for $10,000, mm. you know what I mean? And um, I just packaged up a course for my people and wanted to give people something to, to get started with and the way they whistle with and to kind of like go into their situation with some type of power because a lot of times, first time investors and first time home buyers, they're, they're really succumb to just like their agents and their attorneys information because they don't know a lot so they pretty mm. much go off of whatever the people they trust in with their business to tell them and mm. sometimes these people just don't have your best interest in mind most times they don't they time they got their best interest in mind let's be honest mm. about it you know what i mean so at the end of the day to 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 limit the people who rock with me getting fucked over or misled or led astray i created something that was relatively inexpensive and I wanted to show people how to, you know what I mean, go out and find these deals and look for certain things themselves. And um, mm. I think I did a really, really good job of it. Um, mm. It's super duper high quality. I didn't just do like a regular Zoom course. I did mm. like high, high definition video. I did cool little graphics. And just, it's not the typical course. And uh, I'm extremely proud of the, the package that I put together, man, for mm. real. Awesome, brother. Well, brother, let me tell you something. You, you, I mean, you've given us some great insight, particularly from from a position of somebody. You say you started how long ago? How long ago did you start? Oh uh, man, just in, in 2015 when I bought my first 2015. property. 2015. There it goes, and and it speaks to a lot of some seasoned people as well as people just want to get into the business. Hey guys, thank you for watching our show. We're gonna interrupt you real quickly. We are in the business of referrals. If you know someone looking to buy or sell residential or commercial here in the North Carolina area, refer us. We really appreciate that. Every show, we always ask our guests to give us two golden nuggets, whether it be a book, scripture, uh, a quote that comes from you, something you live by, go ahead and fire away. Um, two things. Um, the main thing, number one, will be to believe in yourself mm. and your plan. Because mm. um, if you don't, nobody else will and i know that shit sound cliche as hell but it's so true um you have to believe you have to have faith you have to move with confidence you have to move with intention um and and you got to believe it even when nobody else do That's and it. In, in addition to that man put in the fucking work you can't just be believing the bible says faith without works is dead like you That's have it. to put in the work like so in addition to you believing believe you can do it but actually go out and put it in the work and show that, you can, that it can be done you know what mm. i mean like believe and put it in the work if you do those two things man it ain't nothing out here that you can't do and i know that from personal experience i've done everything that i've done i've accumulated over 1.5 million dollars worth of real estate and counting because i'm wow. not going to stop mm -hmm. in less than six years you know mm. what i mean actually in less than three years because we got this second property in 2018, I'm just now starting to like scale and grow, you know what I mean, with this shit. So in mm. three years, I was able to attain $1.5 million worth of real estate. And that just comes from me being laser focused, me buckling down and me doing what I needed to do. I was working at a telemarketing job, bro. You heard me, I was making $26,000, $27,000 a year after taxes. Mm. Like that's that's maybe a thousand dollars every two weeks or something like that. Mm. That ain't no mm. lot of money. So if I can do it, I promise to, I swear to God, you can do this shit. <laughs> I it. swear to God you can. That's it, that's it. <laughs> you, you, you know, brother, I, I really, I take my hat off to you, man, that uh, uh, everything you literally just said, I echo that to my team. And a lot of times people reach out to me and I say the same thing in terms of you have to believe in you more than anybody believe in you. Because yes, at the end of the day, you know, nobody nobody really cares. And people don't want to see yeah. you go back, but they don't care. So you have to believe yeah. in you. And then you got to put forth a lot of effort. And you've done a that. Lot. And I'll take, I'll take my hat off to you. And, and, and it won't always right. go this. It'll go this, you'll come back down. Go up a little higher, you come back down a little bit more, right? But I look at that with some time they said sometimes you 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 live and you learn, right? You learn it's a learning experience. This is what it is. It's a physical education that you went through. So now you know better to do, what to do next time. So I commend Absolutely. you on that, brother. Um brother, um, we want to give a shout and thank you, uh Andre Hayes with Renaissance Media 
media group and bullies. I see you had that on there as well. Is that? Yeah, yeah I got, uh, that, I got dogs. Man. Who you bullying, dogs. brother? I got dogs, man. <laughs> you got dogs. Oh, both, yeah, yeah, both yeah. dogs. Oh, okay, yeah, got you, got yeah, you, got yeah, you. Because somebody's seen that. I said, okay, bullies. Okay, bulldogs. Awesome. <laughs> uh, well, brother, like I said, we want to thank you for being on the show. Hopefully, you could be on the show again, right? And sure. and, and and you've you've passed on some great insight. Hopefully, we can possibly do business in the future. Absolutely, man. Whenever y'all need me, whenever y'all want me on the show, I'm here. Now listen, we're gonna give a shout out again to Andre Hayes, and we'll see you all next time. Heading Real Estate Show. Hey, thank y'all for having me, man.